Greetings again. It is I, the Bearded Beerman, and today we are going to do some cooking with beer. So what brought this on was we are having a potluck at work, and I was asked to make my corned beef and cabbage. So I figure this is a great time to actually break into a segment with cooking with beer. So went to the store and bought some goodies. We've got seven pounds of Grubel's uh, corned beef. We've got five pounds of red potatoes. We've got one gorgeous head of, uh, of cabbage. We picked up, we, I picked up some Deschutes Black Butte Porter for the food. This is a 5.2% ABV, coming in at 30 IBUs, and it is best before March 09 of 2019. So I've got six months to use this beer well it's not going to last that long we've got ourselves a nice big bag two pounds of baby carrots we've got the first crock pot and back here is the second crock pot because i'm going to be doing this at a potluck i'm going to cook the main roast roast Cut a meat in here, allow all the juices to do their work and make that meat just delicious and tender and oh. <laughs> and then uh, for the potluck, I'll have one for the meat, one for the taters, and one for the cabbage. So, oh, and I almost forgot. We've also got Lone Hand Whiskey, a Tennessee Sour Mash. This is 80 proof. It is 40% alcohol. Because what I have found is a little bit of whiskey makes the meat a whole lot better. So, let's get this going. First, we're going to start the crock pot. We're going to put it on low. And we're going to allow this to go for multiple hours. So, we're going to grab some scissors. Scissors. There they are, scissors. And we've got, I picked up a couple pieces that don't have a lot of fat on them. So I'm super excited for that. It means I don't have to do any trimming. So, yes, this may be the lazy way, buying a bag of corned beef. But in my area, it's kind of hard to find fresh corned beef. So, Cut that one open, we'll pour it in, we'll get all those juices out of there. Oh. oh, the smell of corned beef, even before it's cooked, is amazing. That there. Let's get the second corned beef set. Cut that open. Oh, oh, nice, nice. Pour it in. Get all the juices in there. Mmm. Okay. Alright, we've got our packets. As you can see, I don't do anything really special for my corned beef. But look at that piece of meat. That is awesome. It's got some good fat in there. Got two little roasts here. Oh, look at that gorgeous piece. So, get that tucked in there. Rinse these hands off again. As 
so for years I did the water. Just put some water in there, let it soak, cook it for 10, 12, 14 hours until it was just falling apart. And then at some point I realized there are other ways of doing it. I've tried baking it, I've tried barbecuing it, and it just didn't turn out as happy as I would have liked it to. So I went back to the crock pot and instead of adding our water, I do beer. The blacker, the better. A stout is really nice, but I really like the flavor of this uh, port. So, depending on how big your crock pot is, will depend on how many beers you will put in there. A little beer for the meat. A little beer for the cook. Mm. Mm. I like that taste. Good roasted notes. Get some good liquid in there. Give it some good love. Oh, bear having a little more for me. Mm. One more. So, I would typically not need so much liquid in here, but I want to have lots of liquid to spread around to my cabbage and potatoes. So, if you're doing it for the night of, or the day of your cooking, uh, depending on how big your roast is, you can get away with just putting your corned beef in there, get it going, throw a couple potatoes in there to start soaking up and giving off some of that wonderful starchiness. Otherwise, you get your stuff going, you let it cook for a few hours, and then you add your potatoes in. Then you, after a little bit longer, you can add your carrots in, depending on how you like them. If you like them super soft and flavorful, or if you want them to have a little bit more crunch to them and just have a little bit of flavor. So, we've got two and a half beers in there. Let's go for another bit. So, but what I'm doing is I'm going to allow this to cook for a good portion of the evening. Get that meat all done, or nearly done. And then I'm going to take out the meat, move it to its own crock pot, and then I'm gonna throw the potatoes in there and let them go for a while while I'm at work. And then maybe an hour, maybe two hours before we actually do the potluck, I'll throw the rest of the carrots, more of the carrots in and the cabbage to allow it to get all wilty and pick up the flavors. And that way, by the time it is time for the potluck, everything will have that flavor. The corned beef. Oh, that looks good. No, oh, I've got another partial bottle. More for the cook. Mm. Oh, that's tasty. All right, so we got that on. We got that on low. I'm going to throw a couple of taters in there just because we got the room one two three and I typically like getting the little ones because that way you can just pop them in your mouth these ones you're gonna want to chop up so we'll put yeah four is good now for the whiskey it depends on your preference, if you like the whiskey or not. I love the flavor of the whiskey. And, um, I believe, I hope I'm not exaggerating, everybody who has had my corned beef at St. Patrick's Day, or my corned beef tacos, has raved about my corned beef. And I always use the whiskey. 
I typically do an Irish whiskey, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So that was two, uh, two huge shots. I don't want the corned beef to have all the fun. So cheers. Mm. Oh yeah, good taste. All right, so we got that going, that that going. Now we got that covered up. Now with a little movie magic, we'll be right back, and you'll see a finished corned beef. Just like that, it's done. Piece of them be here. Oh, and they are way ready. Look at all that. So now we got the meat out. We're gonna let it rest so I can cut it against the grain into some nice chunks. And we're going to start those rest of the potatoes and carrots going. And hopefully soon you'll see what's next. So, we've got our juice. Get some of these taters chopped up. Allow them to start some soaking. Just a rough chop. We'll have about 13 to 15 people at the potluck, so want to make sure people can just scoop and get a couple pieces of each. Nice. Guess you guys will be safe for another day. Smells coming out of this kitchen, exquisite. So, carrots, easy. We're gonna pop them open, pour them straight into there, and then we can pour the juice on top and just let it simmer. Now, the cabbage, we'll give it a rough cut. Thick stock part. And I like to half it. Turn it on the side. And just 
是。那我。Cabbage won't take long at all, so it'll probably get it the lastest. Lastest? Hmm. And I'll take this and I'll put it in as it wilts. We'll have more room. Ah, but we've got our tankard of juice for each. I'll put that on when I get there. And allow it just to soak and simmer. And uh, we'll see if I can get any footage at the at the potluck. But I'm not going to hold my breath on that. But I'll come back afterwards and let you know how it turns out. So, we'll see you when we see you. Things you like to hear after you cook corned beef. Best corned beef I've ever had. From multiple people. So here's to you. Cheers out.